Photoshop 2023 comes with some great neural filters to modify images such as this. This really needs some restoration. Also, it needs some colorization, and you can do that very quickly with the tools in Filter and Neural Filters. The key thing is select the layer before you start. So layer is selected and Neural Filters. Once you're in there, go down to Photo Restoration. Now, of course, you could go for colorization first if you wish. You can see it's detected faces there, and it's a beta at the moment, so you may see a different version. Also, you might have to click download. In this case, if I click there, I've actually got it already, but you may have to click download. Also, to activate it, click here. So just click here, and now it's activated. Now the process in time, it will often say two seconds, five seconds. I haven't taken that. <laughs> it seems to have a mind of its own. Sometimes it can do it very quickly, sometimes not so. You can also change these settings. And I find that when you set some of them away from the defaults, they get a bit blander, the result. Personally, it pushes it sometimes too much. So you not always, more is not always resulting in a great result. Also, you can use scratch reduction. Now, there's a lot of scratches in this. So scratches, just go, push this. Now, you don't want to push it too far. I think you push it up very high, it makes it again very bland, the picture. It just suddenly loses a lot of detail in the faces. I always find that the tool really should concentrate on the face. Sometimes you've got scratches and lines elsewhere. They're not such a distraction that obviously on the face, I would love the software to be a bit more face orientated, especially when they've got this option, enhanced face. You've also got adjustments. So you can change noise reduction. As mentioned, if you push this up, if I go push that up to a fairly, some of these can be quite quick. It will process it, but you can see the result there, very bland. So you might not want to increase noise reduction. Just keep it fairly low, just a little bit of reduction. And you will still get some detail in the faces. Are you satisfied with the result? I love this feature in Photoshop, in neural filters. I wish that all the filters would have this feature because you could go to filter for oil paint or blur and say, well, you know what? The result is not great. It would be great if it did this or did that. And it's nice to tell Adobe things like that. So you can say yes, and it will come up with a panel there and you can put your comments and you can also include the image with the feedback so they can get an idea about how it's working or not. And they can obviously then update it. So skip at that point. Another great feature of all the neural filters that should be in all of the filters, output. Now, the result, the various list here will be different depending if it's a smart object beforehand. Really does depend on the initial sort of settings. In this case, current layer. I don't want the current layer, I want the new layer. If you do it current layer, it just replaces obviously the work that you've already got. And the only way around that is just to undo if you don't want it. At least with new layer, it means that you can always remove the layer and then just continue working. I'm gonna go with that, but there's also smart object, smart filters, this is called smart filter. I'm not certain why it's called smart filter, sorry, smart object, but new document as well, which is really nice because it creates a new document. And then of course you can save that independent of this one. Click okay, and it will process it. Now it should process it fairly quickly. The processing has already been done in the preview. And you can see the result there. And you can also see now you've got a new layer. And of course, the great thing about this is that you can, if you want to, just go up here to blend and you can run through them. So you can blend obviously the result and you can see some interesting designs just from that. Also, you can compare. So you can see, I think that's improved it quite a bit. But the great thing about it is you could, if you want to, just apply it again, and that would use the photo restoration. That was the only one I used. But you can also go into it. So neural filters, select that, and go down here. Unfortunately, it never goes to the one that you last used. Would be really nice if it just went down there. But click it, so it's now active by going here. That's the key thing, just select it, click there. 
That is the key thing. Otherwise, it's just not running. And you can do this again. You can go for photo enhancement. You can push that up. Scratch reduction, maybe very subtle. Again, the more times you apply it, the blander it will get. But it still hasn't re removed that many of the scratches. And again, you probably have to go and use other tools to remove some of those scratches. But the face is fairly clear of scratches and you probably remove those fairly easily. And again, you've got these settings and you go through here. And again, you can always say, are you satisfied with the result? And as it processes it, and you can see it says one second, again, never believe that. It could be one second, it could be 10 seconds. Now you can click OK. That's the key thing, needs to process it. Now the result, if you do it any more than this, I think starts to look more cartoon-like. And it's very good for creating abstract drawings or designs by doing this about five, 10 times. You can create some very surreal looking images from people's faces. And I've done that a few times. I think it's just sometimes very useful, but I don't want to push it that far in this. So click OK. And again, you've got another layer. I was using the new layer option. So layer, layer two, and again, you can click there and you can just run through them. Click there, you can see the result. And again, you can blend them if you want. Just here, just use blend modes as before and see the result. Once you've done that, I'm going to apply Colorize, and that's filter and neural filters. And this one I think is great. I think personally it should be in the restoration as well. But here's Colorize, so click here. Now, none of the others are active. Only thing that activates it is there, so none of these other ones are active. Personally, the profiles, now if I go here, retro high color, the result I think for most cases, especially old pictures, really results in not particularly a great picture. I wish the tool had a feature where it actually, with the lips, and I think it has a problem with lips. And also around the hair as well. The hair just always looks slightly wrong. Background, that could be any color. It could be blue. I don't know how it could ever tell. This, I assume is a curtain. Looks like a curtain. I am certain the curtain was not dark brown. Looks like it's been burnt. It's possible. Now this jumper, it's possible it could have been a light brown, quite a popular color. Likewise, obviously white shirt there, quite reasonable. And the cards there, I assume, looking at it, probably was Christmas time. Maybe got some reds there. Again, I see another item, looks like a Christmas angel or something. So again, probably right. So you've got here, you've got profile strength. Now you can reduce it down. Now I'm just gonna reduce, I don't want the high, but you can run through them. Personally, I keep it to none, but then you've got some options if you want a green. You see a slight green there, perfectly reasonable, but I'm gonna go with none. And you see the profile strength, but if you want to, you can use them. But I would suggest just reducing down that profile strength. Sometimes I find the preset too strong. And then you've got this as well. You've got all the various adjustments, saturation, Again, you might want to reduce it down. I think that's slightly there, probably reasonable. Perfectly happy with all these other ones. Color artifact reduction, anything like that. Sometimes as a result, sometimes not. But again, you've still got all the scratches. It doesn't remove those. And you've got exactly the same as before. You've got, are you satisfied with the result? You might put a comment, send to Adobe, say no. I would prefer the lips to be slightly better or the eye or whatever, certain things, because unfortunately it's made the eyes really without any color. I don't think it knows how to do eye color. And that's an important thing, I think. I mean, if you can't sort of decide what well, it's gonna be light blue or green or brown or whatever, it's gonna end up just creating eyes that just look very lifeless, potentially. And also you've got noise reduction. Again, you probably don't wanna push that up too high. It just makes it a lot blander, depending obviously on the noise in the image. Now, what you can do, yes, no, but also again, new layer. Got exactly the same options, really useful. New layer, click OK, and it will process it, and there's your end result. Now, of course, once you've done that, you've got all these layers to work from, you can deselect it, but you can also continue obviously to work, adjustments, levels, maybe side, do a bit of tweak in there, as well, maybe create it slightly darker. Up to you. 
always undo, decide, do I like that or do I not like that? Or maybe go to layer and new adjustment layers and use those to work on the image. It's still got a little bit of work to go. But of course, you can always go to filter and neural filters, exactly the same as before. And quite often, colorize, click there and let it work on it again. And it does sort of create some interest and you can say auto color, deselect that and then just work on it. And sometimes the result may be of continue to manipulate it, may result in a better image or not. So once you've done that, there it is. An image from, I have no idea when, I would suggest probably the 1950s, I guess. So hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.